transgressions, wandering in sin. I went searching for redemption down a road that had no end. I was walking through. day that the Lord has made. Thank you for joining us here today at Newer Dimensions Fellowship Ministries. I'm Sonia Coleman and today I'm joined by my husband, Elder Steve Coleman. Good morning. This month we will be debuting a new series called Let's Talk About It, where we will be discussing a variety of topics and issues that you may find interesting. Following last month's series, Your Body is a Temple, we had a lot of you that reached out and requested that we do some follow-ups on some of the segments. You've asked and we've listened. So today we're going to be talking about healthy eating. So let's talk about it. Elder Steve. Yes. <laughs> okay, so when we were talking about Your Body is a Temple, we did a segment on physical health. Right. where Deacon Ricky Flowers came in and he had given us a lot of good information concerning exercise and physical fitness. And I had come with a few um, healthy eating tips. Mm -hmm. Well, um, someone who is passionate about eating, that was uh, very easy for me to do. I enjoyed it, but we wanted to expound on it a little bit more. And let me just preface this discussion with a disclaimer that I am no way a licensed dietitian. I'm just someone that's passionate about eating and love the food that I eat. So now that we get that out of the way, let's give a little history of what led us to this road. Hmm. Well, you were the one that originally wanted to make a change. Yeah, true. So what was it that made you want to make the change, but not only make it, but make it a lifestyle change? Well, um, I had kind of shared a little bit when we did Your Body is the Temple about how I had digestion problems and I had some other medical issues and it had just got to the point that I was just, I was tired. And it was 
to the point to where not changing was going to be worse than the change itself. So I knew that it was just, it was finally time. And I had toyed with the idea of going vegan a few times before, but I'll just say it, I love cheese and some bacon. <laughs> those were, those are my things. But it wasn't until we watched the documentary, What the Health, that it was like a switch was flipped. And I knew that I wanted to do it, but I wanted it to be a lifestyle, but I wanted it to be something that the whole family was included in. Right. So what made you get on board with it? Well, for me, the documentary, What the Health, was a life changing in itself. Yes, yes it was. Because before watching it, I would eat anything that tastes good to me. Mm -hmm. You know, not even considering if it was good for me. Right. So for the first time in my life, I took in consideration what I was eating mm -hmm. and was it good for me. Okay. And because I still like my food to taste good. Right. But now I want it to be good for me as mm. well. Absolutely, absolutely. Now we went cold turkey. We didn't ease into it. We didn't, I mean, it was just all or nothing, dived in head first and that was it. Yeah. So I know, I can honestly credit the Holy Spirit with giving me the strength to even endure that and to be able to stick with it. I mean, as believers, we love to quote Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. But it wasn't until this experience that that was never more real. I mean, right. we had uh, done some fasting many times with the church. And I would always say, you know, you know, I feel good. I'm not going back. But what would happen? You would go back. You see, and that's because in our mind, you know, we look forward to when the fast would be over. Yep. So yep, exactly. we, got, we got in our mind is what we're going to eat after the fast. Mm -hmm. So that's why we quickly reverted. Even though it felt good, we right. felt good during it, the fast. And it did. It did. You reverted right back to what was familiar and eating, you know, back to the bad habits of eating like that. We always went back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can include myself. We in that. always went back. But this time, Yahweh had a different plan because we didn't. And I'm not saying that it was easy, but it was just like it, it, it wasn't like it was before. And you had even came aboard with, with some encouragement showing in scripture, you know, what God had said about, you know, what we put into our bodies and how we nourish our bodies and, and just pointing out how in Genesis, the first chapter, verses 29 through 30, how he had told Adam and Eve, you know, that they could eat of any tree in the garden for food. Well, yeah, so any funny. tree but one. We know the tree they weren't supposed to eat off of. But any tree in the garden for nourishment and food in their bodies. And last month, we, we kind of touched on how in Daniel chapter 1, uh, verse 12, how he had said, you know, he didn't want to eat the king's food. He wanted to have vegetables and water. And after 10 days, you know, let him show how he ended up being stronger and healthier than all of the other servants. Yeah, a lot of times, see, we take that scripture out of context, mm -hmm. you know, because... We look at it as, you know, this is a Daniel fast. Right. But this is what, this is what Daniel's lifestyle. Right. Daniel didn't want to defile his body. Right. This is why he chose to, to eat a certain way. Mm -hmm. This wasn't something that he just wanted to try for 30 days or 21 days or 15 days. This is what's the way he was taught to eat by God's standards. Exactly, exactly. Now, I'm not saying that you have to be vegan in order to be healthy. That's not the case. And, and it's, the end result is not to just get skinny because skinny does not equate healthy. You know, and so I don't want to get that twisted. But that's what we chose to do. That's what worked for us. And I firmly believe that people need to do what works for them. I am a, I'm just an advocate of making healthier choices. Anything that's going to benefit you. And I'm a witness. I've seen people get off medication. I've seen people uh, that dealt with physical conditions totally be cured and healed from those conditions just by changing 
their eating habits. Yes, and, and, and along with the eating habits is, you know, a lot of times, see, because, yeah, we went vegan, mm -hmm. right? But there are some vegans that's not, that's not skinny, <laughs> you know? So another thing that this, what the health, you know, documentary taught me was that you have to watch your consumption yes. what you take in, yes. you know, it has to be in moderation. You know, a lot of times, you know, we, we eat, but we don't eat to, to satisfy the hunger. We eat until we just get filling. That's to why just we just be gluttons. That's why a lot of times we frequent restaurants that say all oh, you can eat. All oh, you can eat. Because so what's in my mind is not the variety of different foods that I can have, but I'm all eat I can all eat. All I can and eat. And that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> and that's what I used to do. But now I take in consideration on how much I consume. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. a major factor. All righty which that's, I mean, and that's key, you know, because I even like to say that um, sugar is sugar, flour is flour, you know, and yes, you can, I bake vegan, but that just means I don't use any dairy or animal products in the baking, in the baking, but I'm still using sugar, whether it's coconut sugar, whether it's monk fruit sugar, it's still sugar. So anything in too much in excess is going to be detrimental to your health. Yes. So you still have to be cognizant of what you're eating and those portion controls like you mentioned before. Yeah. And I did not have that before. I did not have the portion control down, nor the eating. Well, I think we, we both like, you know, to, to, to get a big burger and, and a big plate of food every now and again, you know, that's, that's, that's what we do. That's, that's America. That's why all restaurants offer those big portions and all you can eat and, and can you eat this big platter of food? You can win a t-shirt, you know, and that's what helped to breed the obesity problem in America, yeah. you know? So, um, I do have some tips that I'd like to share when it comes to. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. What are some of the, what should I say, suggestions? Suggestions? That you, uh, you, that you would help, you know, tell someone that's looking to make a change, a lifestyle change. Well, you know, my biggest one is always determine your why. Because everybody has a why. Um, and once you've identified why you want to make those changes, now you can set those goals that help make it more attainable, you know, because now you know the purpose and the reason as to why you want to make this change. Right. And number two, educate yourself. Educate yourself on different lifestyles. I mean, the spectrum is so broad when it comes to eating. You have vegans, you have vegetarians, you have your carnivores or meatitarians, as they like to say. I mean, there's the spectrum is so wide, and we originally started off vegan, which I stayed, but you chose to go pescatarian. And pescatarian means that you can eat fish and seafood. And I've never liked seafood, so that right. wasn't a, a draw for me. Yeah. So I just chose to stay straight vegan. But again, find what works for you. And then number three, I like to say, set your own pace. Rome wasn't built in a day and it will not be toured in a night. Nothing happens overnight. And give yourself that time to adjust, to make mistakes, to figure some things out. Right. Because remember, you want to make this a lifestyle and not just a fad or the latest diet. And then finally, number four, get support. You know, yes, anything is possible with God, but there is nothing wrong with surrounding yourself with a good support system of people that are going to not only maybe take this journey with you, but also encourage you, hold you accountable, and just share information with you. Yeah, that's good. Now you mentioned sharing information. Mm -hmm. Is that why you started your Facebook page? A group? Yeah. I mean, like I said before, we went cold turkey. So that means I had to figure out real fast <laughs> what we were going to eat because we still had to eat. Yeah, it was all new to us. It was, yeah. it was all new. And yeah. I didn't have a clue. Like, I have a family to feed. So how am I going to keep them on board with this by showing that we still aren't going to be missing anything? So that was the prime motivation. And thankfully, I had the time to devote to it 
you know, my schedule was clear to where I was able to research and find those recipes and how to do it. And not only that, but take some online cooking courses, yes. you know, to show me how to prepare those things. Um, even online baking, how to substitute and still be able to bake. But that's not the situation for a lot of people. And I find that um, people work. They're raising kids, the kids have activities. You might not have the time to do all of that research, so it's only gonna be a matter of time before the frustration sets in, and then you're falling back into those old eating habits. Yes, because that's one of my <laughs> things was, uh, I, I told you before earlier that I like stuff that tastes good. Right. So in the back of my mind, I was wondering, okay, is this, is this gonna taste good? Mm -hmm. So I was, I'm thankful and grateful that you had the opportunity to do the research on it. And the food still tastes good, but it's also yes, good for Yes, it did. So I thank you for that. And, and so that's why I started Sonny's Guide to Grubbin, to be able to provide recipes, product information, just showing you what's out there, even to uh, show that there's restaurants that you can still go to that offer those healthy, you know, eating options which then in turn led to me writing a children's book series yes, featuring yes. a little girl that's vegan and her group of friends, you know, so it even helps parents when it comes to helping your children transition. Yes, that's, that's awesome. Yes. That's awesome. So if you don't mind, share where that came from. Where, where, did, the idea, where did the idea come from? Well, I named it Sonny's Guide to Grubbin because uh, Sonny is a, that's my family nickname. That's what my family calls me. It's a childhood nickname. And I said Guide to Grubbin because I still like to grub. I like to get my grub on. I like to eat, you know, I, and I stay grubbin. That's my hashtag. Hashtag stay grubbin, you know, but I call it a vegan resource, but it's not primarily for vegans. Right. You know, it, anybody is welcome. I like to call it a judgment free zone to where, you know, you can come on there. You can get some new ideas. You might just want to try something different. You just might want to be nosy, but everyone is welcome. So come on. We don't judge. You know, everyone is welcome. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. And, 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 and to uh, follow up on that. I did bring a couple of my favorite recipes that I have posted on the, on the Facebook group before, as well as some products that I feel that when people are looking to transition or just try something new that's beneficial. So would you like to try some things? Yes, you know, I know you're my used to my product. eating, but <laughs> you know, my cooking and eating my cooking, but you know, we're going we're gonna to share it with everyone out there. I think that would be great. Okay, Elder Steve, so I have a spread <laughs> of some things for you, but before we get to the eating, let me just share some of the products because, like I said, I do put product information on there just so you know what's out there. And I find that um, it doesn't always have to be vegan. I mean, there are some, some awesome salad kits out there that, you know, make eating a salad not boring anymore. But some of the things that I, some of my favorite products is, is cheese. Remember I said I love cheese? And there's so many different vegan cheeses on the market now. Uh, here's a Parmesan one and cheddar. And this is just a couple of brands that's out there. There are so many, and, and they're doing so many things to make it taste like real cheese that you don't even miss it because it melts like real cheese. So what are some of these things made of though? A lot of times, because they are plant-based, a lot of it is maybe made out of soy. So I would definitely say read the labels in case you do have an intolerance to soy. But like with this egg, this is just egg. And this is made out of mung beans. You know, there are some other things in there, but everything is plant-based and it scrambles up and you can make an omelet just, like, just egg. like egg. And I use some black salt that I do order online, but a lot of health food stores do carry it. And black salt gives you that eggy taste. So when you put some black salt with this, it's just like eating eggs for those that's missing it. You're really not missing anything. So I don't miss my omelet. 
he eats an omelet, I do believe, every day. And then, you know, they have Aldi. This is a, a product from Aldi where they have the meatless, chickenless, you know, chickenless patties to where you can make those chicken sandwiches or for those taco eaters, you know, get you a bag of crumbles. These are veggie crumbles. A lot of times, uh, like I say, there's soy in there. Um, they use a lot of different plants to make these. So it's all plant-based, but it, it cooks up just like hamburger. You can get now some fresh and then you can get frozen. You can put it in pasta sauces. You can make tacos. Anything that you do with ground beef, you can do with this. Um, this is a new product that I'm anxious to try. And this is cauliflower uh, baking mix. So if you wanna make homemade pizzas and different things, this is all cauliflower. Another thing that this, this is a really good buy. This is a bag of cauliflower rice. And rice, regular rice has a lot of carbs in it. And I do love regular rice. But I've been trying to get myself to eat the cauliflower rice because it doesn't have as many carbs in it. I love it. So yes, he, he's a big quinoa eater too. And I didn't bring the quinoa. But this bag is a dollar at Dollar General or not Dollar General, I'm sorry, Dollar Tree. So there's a lot of things that you can still buy. And this is not even all of a lot of the products. And then spices. Don't leave out the spices because that's where you're gonna get your flavor. And it wasn't until I went vegan that I started exper experimenting with different spices that's gonna give me that flavor. I mean, you got za'atar. I never bought za'atar before, but this is a Mexican, uh, I'm not Mexican, I'm sorry, a Mediterranean spice that gives really good flavor. Uh, this is um, an all-purpose seasoning that you can put in anything. I've even put this in my vegan macaroni and cheese. But this one right here, this is chickenless seasoning salt that I get from Trader Joe's. And I had to try it. It was $1.99 for this little bottle. And it gives things a chicken flavor because I never said chicken didn't taste good. I just don't want to eat chicken. So when I want to give that, you know, some things flavor, gravies, broth, soups, I put this little chickenless, you know, seasoning in there. But let's get to the food. Yes, so I think grubbing. that's what you that's what you were waiting on, the actual grubbing. So I did bring some of my favorite, you know, things that I like to make that really I've made them for people that aren't vegan that they've enjoyed. Um, one of my favorites is the chickpea salad sandwich. And if you are a fan of chicken salad or tuna salad, or you're looking for some easy make ahead lunches, this is it right here. It's your go to. And a can of chickpeas is 65 cents, you know, and then you're adding your other things that you would have on hand, your mayo, vegan, your, your celery, well, I use vegan, but you may use your regular mayo, your celery, your onions, your spices and everything. And you make this chickpea salad sandwich, but it's meatless. And it's, it's very, very good. This is one of my favorites. And then I have the cauliflower, and they like to say wings, but nobody's food. We know that it's not chicken wings, but it mimics boneless wings. I like to call them cauliflower bites. And all I do is I bake them up, so I'm not even frying them. You know, I do my batter and I, and I roll them in some panko and a little bit of this nutritional yeast, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then I bake them. And then I just took some teriyaki sauce and, and, a, and a buffalo sauce and I tossed them, you know, with a little homemade ranch dressing. And now you have cauliflower bites and then popcorn. Popcorn, you don't, I mean, I do make it, but I buy it a lot of times too because this is a very good snack and I literally eat popcorn all the time. Yeah. Every week I'm eating popcorn a couple of times a week, but I put this on it a lot of times and nutritional yeast is, it's, a, it's good with protein and uh, vitamin B12. So a lot of vegans do eat this because of the nutrients in it, but it gives things a cheesy taste. So they use it when they make sauces, macaroni and cheese to give that cheesy taste. But I just like to sprinkle it on popcorn. Have you ever tried it? Have I ever let you try this? Yes. Okay. Tastes so good. yeah, it does. It gives it a little cheesy taste and it flavors the popcorn. Mix it with a little garlic and some vegan butter or regular butter and put it on there. Now you got a cheesy garlic butter popcorn. Easy peasy, don't cost you anything. And then the dessert. Now we talked about how, 
<laughs> we talked about how that, yes, it's still desserts and anything too much in excess is not good for you. And I make a bomb lemon sugar, vegan lemon sugar cookie, but I chose to make this one because this is a skinny lemon snickerdoodle. And I chose to make this because the recipe is vegan as well as for non-vegans. And the non-vegan recipe, which calls for regular butter and two egg whites, only has 97 calories a cookie. So I wanted to show this because this is when you can enjoy some sweets, but not getting all of those calories. And it still tastes great. And it can be made for vegans and non-vegans. So now that we've kind of given you um, a little tour of what's on the table, got a fork for you. So what would you, <laughs> what would you like to try? Thank you. <laughs> he was oh, waiting on that try part. It. First, let me try it. Uh, one of your uh, cauliflower buffalo wings. Okay. And just let me just take a little piece here and dip it in this little wonderful sauce that you made. And My vegan ranch dressing. And it still has that wow. buffalo flavor. I mean, yes, it's not meat. So I'm not saying that it tastes like chicken wings. But it's a healthy alternative that when you're looking to have a meatless Monday or eliminate some meat throughout the week, this is a good alternative. Try the teriyaki one. Uh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> How you double dipping? <laughs> teriyaki mm -hmm. flavor, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I can sit up and watch a basketball or football game eating this. See? And you're not missing anything. And that's the key. That's what lets you be able to make those healthy choices when you don't feel like you're depriving yourself of anything, you yeah. know? It's good. Can I have one more? You can have one more. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Let's talk about it. Well, I am so glad that you guys decided to join us today. I mean, this is something that I am very passionate about. And I hope that the information shared today that you found beneficial. And always, I just like to say, thank you for your generous giving. It's because of what you do that allows us to be able to do what we do. And this isn't the end of Let's Talk About It. If there's any type of topics or issues that you want to discuss, please feel free to reach out to us on Facebook and let's talk about it. So with that being said, I just want to wish you all an amazing week. We love, love you, you and God, God bless. I was dead in my transgressions, wandering in sin. I went searching for redemption down a road that had no end. I was walking through. from being perfect